from Dale Pinkert. See some familiar handles out there. Hope everyone's doing okay. Thanks for spending your most valuable currency, which is your time, to try and edify yourself and become a more effective trader. Thank you for moderating this for, for us, Matthias. Were any of you around last week when it was a one-way street in the market that all the dollar could do was go down and I started presenting some of the possible foundations slipping away from that? Hi, Andy. Basil, how are you? Okay, let's get started off with taking a look at the Dixie. Here's where we were last Wednesday. I said I have a hard time wanting to get short the dollar at this time. And we had some follow through early into the week. In fact, marginally made new lows for the move here. Today on the June futures, closed about unchanged. Uh, to me, it looks like there's at least a bear market rally coming in. I tweeted that I thought uh, Euro could sell off to 47 to 46.50 going into the NFP. We'll address all the individual pairs here. Just want to show you the hourly. <clears throat> before today's turn. Okay. This was it. Kind of a stop hunt from early in the week and not much follow through. So if you just call this a range between, say, 73 and 73 and a half, to me it looks like 74 is a layup. I think a lot of people were trying to front run Trichet's statement. They're going to get run over in my view. And we'll get to that when we get to the Euro. Let's take one quick look at the weekly. Uh, just a little tool that you could play with in any chart, uh, any market, any asset class. Uh, you look for two closed reversals to confirm a shift in direction. So we had one of those today in the Dixie. We closed above Monday's close of 73.14. So on the close, it was a buy. And I'm just talking about simple arithmetic, if you take today's range of 72.86 with a high of 73.48, that's 160, uh, excuse me, that's 60 pips, takes you up towards the 74.10, and a lot of a lot of people are calling the breakdown in the Dixie under 74, everyone recall that, so for uh, the dollar to go back to 74 would be a retest of the breakdown. I'm not going to rule out that there's more left in this. It's possible that we're going to have uh, more of a rally if we start getting through 74 and a half. Then you're talking in the 70, uh, 76 handle in the Dixie. How many dollar bulls in the room? Okay, we're going to 76.50. No one's bullish a dollar still. Don't blame them. It's been disappointing. Um, presented some things last week in the yen and Swiss and uh, Canadian dollar, uh, as well as talked about that I felt that cable might have just one more high. I don't know if anyone followed my tweet, but after uh, the day that we had last Thursday, low reversal day, kind of a doji in cable, I put out a uh, recommendation calling, uh, looking for a wedding day top and cable. And that's kind of how it all went down. Even though it was an economic number that accelerated into the downside. Anyone here today uh, was also here last week? Because I like to kind of start off with a review. When I'm wrong, I'm wrong. And uh, I'm not afraid to say it because it happens, will continue to happen. 
But uh, last week, if you uh, took to heart any of the things I said, that's right. I think it's even more vulnerable than Euro. You, you were here. In fact, you were kind of on the same side of the table as me, Pips Damon. You were looking for reasons to buy the dollar. So I remember what you said. That's okay. FX Street is uh, recording this one. <laughs> okay. So basically, uh, everyone have my drift that I think there's at least a bear market rally coming in um, the Dixie. Uh, if you've noticed that uh, we put in an Osama bin Laden top, classic type of uh, topping action on a major historical event in the S&Ps. Let me just... Uh, bring that up quickly because if you're an FX trader besides following individual pairs you have to follow the basket the disc the Dixie and you also have to be aware of different asset classes and the potential risk on risk off scenario this is pretty negative in the S&P's this was the opening on the Osama bin Laden um, being taken out. Classic euphoric opening was into my time zone. You guys have a member, NASCO, who was looking for a top after the earnings season, and I had a 1350 to 65 range for it in the S&Ps. And there we are, bingo. By the end of the day, and this is important because this is part of the risk on, risk off trade, just like the metals that got crushed something else I talked about last week. They topped as well on, I believe it was Sunday evening in Asia, 1570 gold, and silver uh, was demolished even more. So uh, if you took to heart some of the things I said last week and acted on them, should have helped you. So if you can't remember some of these things, uh, write down the things that I say. I write down things. Um, so that it makes an impression because there's a lot of information overload in the FX world and I'm sure everyone's trying to absorb everything like a sponge. So it helps to uh, go through the act of writing it down and uh, that way it'll call your attention to a potential uh, technical trade or or a certain area. In fact, uh, I used to update my charts by hand um, because I felt that it left more of an impression on me than just using uh, some type of software program for charting. That was in the old days. I'm much lazier now. So uh, definitely I, I don't update my charts by hand. But anyway, you have the makings of a fairly significant high. Uh, a lot of people, I was talking about this. I know it's an FX seminar, but here's one lesson for you. Oh, good for you. A lot of people were calling this formation a head and shoulders bottom. And I poo-pooed it for one reason. Head and shoulders bottoms happen at bottoms. Right? Not at tops. You don't get major reversal formations after an extended bull move. Maybe a revert, maybe a head and shoulders top is developing. But no, I said no way this is a head and shoulders bottom here. Back to the daily. So a lot of people are going to consider this 1330 level as uh, the breakout area between here and 1330. And if we start getting closes under 1330, you're going to see a, a very big bid in the dollar. Possible that it could hold it. Okay, so this is important because if uh, we break down under 1330, it's not going to be a, a bearish environment for the dollar. It's going to be a bullish environment for risk off, which means the dollar, which means bonds, which means being short most risk assets. Now I get some amens in the room that you're on the same page and you understand what I'm talking about. That's good. 
Okay, Rob. Okay. So the rest that didn't answer uh, just want to observe and not participate. It's important that you understand uh, the what I'm talking about is correlation work between different asset classes, and then I also do that breaking it down to correlation work between pairs. But you also need to have a macro view of what's happening in other asset classes if you're a currency trader. So you may want to start following what's happening in S&P, what's happening in the bond market, what's happening in commodity markets as an FX trader. Just a suggestion. So here we're on the verge of, uh, let's just take a quick look at the weekly and then we'll move to the pairs. Also, uh, if you, uh, we have a reversal week. If you notice, uh, I'm Dale with Forex Stop Hunters. Okay, so what do we do? We're trying to exploit stops. Okay, where are the stops in the S&Ps? Are there any buy stops left? No. Just like there are no buy stops left in Euro, and Cable got them, and Canada got them, and Swiss did today, there are mainly sell stops. So to exploit the stops, you want to look for technical reasons to be short and look to start booking things as stops are elected along the way down, just like in Aussie and Kiwi. I remember saying that Kiwi was showing cracks last week. How about that, Pips? So the commodity currencies are actually the weak sister leading it down just the way they let it up. So Aussie and Kiwi being weak and also talked about, <clears throat> very good, uh, talked about the potential of a low in Canada, USD CAD, also having a very good week. Because it looks to me like besides uh, the precious metals topping, that crude may be following the same path and that we may see crude back under 100. Yeah, I think that there's a possibility, but maybe from 106.80, Andy. From lower. I've heard that too, 110.80, 111, it's possible. But it was a nice ride on the downside, wasn't it? And from last Wednesday, there wasn't that much risk, was there? Pull up your chart. And if you're following what the uh, commercials are doing, they have deeper pockets than you, Andy. I used to follow the COT quite closely, aligning, uh, aligning myself with the commercials and large specs and fading retail. But one, one difference is the commercials have deeper pockets than most individual traders. So they have the staying power to be early. Just a little something else you may want to consider writing down. Commercials uh, have a very good track record, but they have kind of the same tendency as me. I'm always a bit early, but I was taught better to be early than late. And that's why I scale trade, and I'm not an all-in, all-out trader. I piece my way in and piece my way out. I trade, holding core positions, trading around them. Okay, so everyone understands that S&Ps look pretty vulnerable. You know, maybe we're going to get some type of uh, test of 1240 or so. That was the low in January. So maybe look for January levels in the currencies. Maybe that's where we're going back to. Okay, let's go the individual pairs now. Any questions on these two asset classes? The dollars and that dollar and S and P's? Okay, let's start off with the hourly and USD CAD. This was last Wednesday. 
So we had that flush out into Friday's close. And again, it was a stop hunt. Back here, you could see it. Okay. They went for these stops. And that was it. Never revisited this area again on the four hour. You had very nice relative strength divergence here. Look at these two lows. Above 30. Well above 30. And I still think that this has higher to go. I think 97.20 is a likely place for this rally to go to to clean out the bears over this high. Right now being rejected by this little uh, wedge line here. But perhaps we're going to get to weekly resistance, and that's uh, right up around the 97 and a half level. That's my take here. Then maybe... We have one more flush out in Canada. But for now, I think they're going to shake out the uh, retail trader who's mainly short this pair. Ever, am I in uh, agreement with everyone could see this and understand why I think there's still more potential upside here? And you can't rule out that it's a significant low. If the S&Ps really break down hard, the last time we had a dramatic push up uh, was last May. We rallied from uh, 99.30 in about one, two, three, six weeks. We rallied almost 900 pips, over 900 pips. That was the flash crash. I'm not saying we're going to have another flash crash. But we could have a vicious decline here. Looks like the market's aborting. So just a little historical analog that this ha this is what happened the last time we had a pretty good hit in the stock market a year ago. To me, it looks like deja vu, maybe not as extreme. Okay, maybe we just get back to the 99 level instead of doing something like this. But I would not be pressing the short side of this here. And I know there still are a lot of uh, crude bulls looking for 150, 200. That may happen, but that's later. Right now, um, we're in a liquidation mode of extremely stretched out one-way markets where you have extreme sentiment in all of these markets. You had extreme bullishness in S&Ps and gold and silver and euro and extreme bearish, bearishness in the dollar. And now the Johnny-come-latelys to this party, uh, in my extremely accurate and humble opinion, I'm proud to tell you all how humble I've become, is that they're going to be squeezed out of their positions. Even if they're right long-term, I think there's going to be some short-term pain for the dollar, the risk-on, dollar-bearish outlook. Okay, let's move over to Euro. It's been the strength. Uh, very classic divergence here today at the highs. I think a lot of people are trying to front run Trichet's comments, the ECB meeting. So yet another classic stop hunt. We took out the stops over the uh, 149.01 level. So your first tip-off was once we started trading back under 901, that it was just a stop hunt. I have targets uh, down here around 147, 146, 50. And who knows what this could turn into. Um, a decent reversal day, not quite a reversal. But this market's so long that we could have some type of uh, decent pullback. 46.50 is my target on this return line, plus um, follow me on this. From this high to this low was 150 pips. So if this is corrective, this whole, whole thing could have been some type of A wave with a B wave at new highs, irregular Bs, they call them in Elliott wave terms, 
And I would look for a 1.618 extension of this 150 pip um, correction here, which gives you about 240 pips from today's high. So what's that give you? 147-ish in here. So I'd be selling rallies here. I know a lot of people are looking for 151 to 153. I think you'll get it, but not now. Any questions? Okay, we we just had a question about cable. Yeah, I I think we're, you should pay. I think you should go to Mexico. Whoever asked me that. <laughs> I don't think we're going to see 169. Not before we see lower levels. It's hanging on by a thread on the 21 EMA. Here we were last Wednesday, right? I said, I'm looking for a high into the wedding. It actually, the high was put in the day before the wedding. This was the wedding day. And then we had Monday, the big down Tuesday. Try to recover, but let me ask you this. If I'm bearish euro, pretend I'm your eye doctor, your optometrist. Which is weaker? This is paracorrelation work, right? Which one's leading? I'm not saying that we can't get a rally back to 166.20, but I don't think we're going to make new highs here based upon what I'm seeing in S&Ps and even euro here. But here's the question. Which pair is weaker, this or this? This or this? Answers? This didn't make a new high today, did it? All it did was recover when the euro made new highs, right? Euro took out last week's highs, right? Cable didn't. So what's your preferred short, this or this? Don't you want to be short the weakness? Might be a little more forgiving if your timing, if your timing isn't perfect. Okay. So my take on cable is that it's in trouble. Here's your weekly chart. Never took out 70. Had decent divergence, at, even though it was a blow-off in the dailies. So, sell rallies. That's my view. So specific entries, exits, target prices, for the most part, I save for the membership. Okay, here's something that um, is also shaping up. We'll move over to the yen, U.S. dollar yen now. Last week I said it wasn't ready. I thought there was a chance that we might test last October's lows. But I do believe the bottom's in. I just started nibbling today right around this area. I'm going to scale trade this uh, all the way down to 79.75 or so. So I'm willing to be early. In fact, when I scale trade, I try and be in the zone of turning points. But I have no problem trading, like, uh, if cable rallies, it doesn't have to make a new high for me to want to short it, right? Because you don't have to be perfect, and you have to reduce your leverage. That's why it really helps you. Hello, Ian. Because you're, you know, a market can move against you, and it's not life or death every every tick so I believe in reducing your leverage and if you scale trade you have to so say a full position is a one lot position your first probe is a point three because I usually don't scale more than uh, two additional entries after my first good for you so you could you could handle the noise 
that way. And I also scale out. Do you scale out? In fact, uh, I teach that when we have positions moving on in our favor, 10 to 30 pips in our favor, that we take half off the table of that position. Uh, because we want, this is a job, right? So we want to get paid. And the only way that you get paid is by going to the door. It's not a profit till you take it. I also use market orders instead of limits. If it's in the neighborhood, I go to the market. I've seen limit orders limit people's success time and time again. Just my view. Okay, so I'm starting to uh, nibble at the long side of yen here. We still have some decent divergence on the four hour and the one hour. So what I'm looking for is I can make a case of having another move like this from wherever we bottom here. And this was a 900 pip move. So I'm looking for at least a 900 pip move and possibly some type of fib extension of this move. Could be as big as uh, 1,400 pips or so from wherever this wave terminates. Okay, moving on to uh, US dollar Swiss. If I'm right about Euro, there's at least a bear market rally coming in here. I'm long some Swiss thinking that we have at least a push maybe up towards the upper 86 range. And depending upon how negative equities get and the euro gets, um, we could have a bit more maybe, you know, up in here. But I'll be going to the door in the upper 86, low 87 range on this trade on a good portion of it. The reason I'm not as excited about uh, Swiss as I am, I was about Canada. In, uh, in Canada, you had daily divergence, right? On the washout, it was not confirmed. But in Swiss, look at the daily. It confirmed these new lows. So I'm just looking for some type of short squeeze initially. And then maybe one more low in Swiss that will not have this type of downside momentum. So that's where my head is in Swiss. We talked about gold last week. It was probably here. <clears throat> so we had the dramatic spike up. I think this market's in trouble. I think there's at least a 10% correction. Remember last week I said I'm in the 10% club. So 10% correction in S&Ps would take us back down to the 1,200 level. 10% in gold. We've already had 10% in silver, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Now, I will pair back, Andy, a lot of my uh, positions going into the number, the NFP, because that's not trading. That's roulette. That's a black or red bet. But yeah, I think that there's a pop coming. But you know what they say, I've been looking for this for a while, and a broken clock is right twice a day. But I think it's a time because we're, um, the S&Ps are really putting in a pretty negative week. I don't think the NFP is going to turn the uh, S&Ps. We could end up having, if we start taking out 1330, it could get pretty ugly. <clears throat> I know that uh, there'll be attempts to buy this uh, market at 1330. Just like there'll be attempts to buy Euro at 47. You know, there are going to be rallies along the way. Or at least attempts at rallies. Okay? But yeah, you have the gist. I think QE2 turns into QE3 light. Yeah, I think there are problems. That's why learn how to be long the dollar. 
But this could be, we could range trade in Euro here. Could be a six, we could be in a 600 point trading range, you know, for a while. Then I think things uh, really start getting uglier in the third quarter. Okay, I think the third quarter, the third quarter is uh, when things start unwinding. <clears throat> and then I think uh, Spain, Spain ends up being the next issue in Europe. And the, then the UK. And then the US. Any preppies in the room? Getting ready for the end times? I'm curious. People worried about, you know, have your food, right, have your food put away and your water and your precious metals and your ammo. You know what, Andy? There isn't one country that isn't on the hook, including China. So we may as well go to what we're talking about now. Let's go to commodity currencies, all right? Here's the Aussie. Hello. Now, the COT report says it has juice left in it. <clears throat> I wouldn't buy a close like this. I would wait. I wouldn't buy. I wouldn't be getting long Aussie right here. That looks pretty ugly to me. And just beginning. So here we were. Here we were a week ago. 108.78. So there was another 125 pips up from last week's webinar. But this is a pretty negative chart. Here's one of my targets, 106.78. Do you guys use a 21 EMA? If not, plug it into your charts and start playing with it. Anyway, I'm negative Aussie. Okay. Uh, last week I was talking about cracks and kiwi. And Kiwi started, you know, I started making jokes about Kiwi is going to become Peewee. But it had a few stop hunts left in it, especially the one Monday. But I have, uh, I have objectives all the way down, like around the 74 level down here. And all that would be is a correction from the lows of the spring. Right? Halfway back, here's the low, 71.25 to 81, oh, 80, 88, halfway back, right here. So that's the wrap on all the pairs that I cover, including S&Ps, including metals. We, we're now, the, the big shift is that we're now going to have a two-sided market, okay? So get used to trading both sides of the market. Just don't have one bias of uh, the dollar's going to hell and it's the end of the dollar and the reserve currency. Uh, you know, we've been here before, and then the dollar will have a big run, and then it'll, the talk will be, I actually think there's a case for... 114 euro into the end of the year. And then, you know what everyone will be talking about? The demise of the eurozone. Just like they're right now <laughs> talking about the demise of the U.S. dollar. So sentiment and psychology has been on both sides of that extreme quite a few times in the last three, four years. Don't you agree? Don't you agree, though? I mean, really, we've gone from the Eurozone imploding when it was 118, right. Now, the, the end of the dollar, of it being the reserve currency, yes. Okay, don't get caught up in it. Ladies and gentlemen, um, at least short term, the worm has turned. At first, 
take it a step at a time. Uh, perhaps view this as just a bear market rally in the dollar. Don't be afraid to take profits along the way. Uh, don't try and hit a home run ball in the dollar or any other market. And uh, take what the market offers you. And most importantly, don't just count your pips. Count your blessings. I want to thank you for your time and your attention today. I'm open to a few questions if you want to fire them out to me. All the stop hunts, yeah, and all the stop hunts right now, all the stop hunts are on the downside, bunch of sell stops and euro cable. They cleaned out a lot of uh, the sell stops and Aussie and so forth. If you're interested in um, how we do this real time, uh, we have a live trading room. Uh, there are actually some traders in there that are better than me. It's a very collaborative environment. Uh, after room hours, I Skype ideas. We exchange ideas by looking at the charts and saying, where are the stops? Where are the obvious swing lows and highs? Let's look at the euro. Where are the stops in euro right now? Right here. Right here. Right here. I don't think there are many buy stops, right? So the question to ask, if you're looking for where the sell stops are, ask yourself, okay, if I were long, where would I put my stop? And the answer you come up with most likely is going to be the answer that a lot of people are coming up with. Does that help? Or ask yourself if you're, I, uh, ask yourself when you're short, where would I place my buy stops? And that's where they'll be. Mostly over obvious swing highs and swing lows. You guys, I think, call them RRRs, <laughs> right? Any other questions before I say good night? Yes, I get stopped out, but I, you know, you when you put on a trade, when you put on a trade, the best trades are putting them on after the stops have been taken out. But yes, I do. I get stopped out. In fact, today in Euro, I viewed this as a stop hunt over 901. Okay. So I was short from a little over 49. So I took heat. I almost got nipped. And there weren't any stops, but you know, I had to use, uh, in fact, a guy in my room was very good was also looking to sell at 49.20 and then at 60. So I adjusted the stop and it worked out for us. At times I'll pull my stops. If I'm not really heavily leveraged and if I'm a scale trader, I have to, if I'm going to scale trade, I have to be risking at least 100 pips from my first entry. Because I'm not going to put the second position on 10 pips away from my first, right? Follow me? Okay. All right, well, good hunting, everybody. You're welcome. Hope you learned a few things here today. Welcome, Andy. Do I know you, Andy? You're welcome. Keller, Falco, you're very welcome. Basil, you too, Andy. Okay. Fernando, how have you been? Okay, everyone. Same to you, Ian. Good night, everyone.